Welcome to another Friday episode of Engagement That Scales with Rachel Hoppy. We are, I don't know, extra excited this week. We, the second week of our annual Connect Conference just finished and it was wonderful. And our special guest this week was a big part of that. So I am gonna mute myself and hide and you ladies can take it away. Thank you, Shannon. Marjorie, it's so nice to chat with you. I, I don't know, it's been, uh, it, I don't know how long it's been, but it's great to like have these scheduled events that I can catch up with people. And I listened to your session this week with uh, Lisa and uh, it's been on my mind because I am having a lot of conversations on the advisory side of our business about, you know, all of a sudden people have religion about community because they're dealing with employees that are not in the office and they're like, how do we connect? And we're like, luckily, there's a way to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the challenges are that, uh, you know, community has traditionally come from this little quiet area of the business where we're doing our things. And now the whole business and the whole ecosystem wants to do it. And that presents some unique challenges. So uh, I really enjoyed that discussion because I think it's relevant to that. Um, it was also very insightful. And, uh, but before we get to that, what have you been up to? Oh man, where do I start? So yeah, first, <laughs> so first, thank you so much for, for taking some time to chat with me. I always like chatting with you guys and I don't get to chat with you enough. So this is extra special for me. Um, but what I've been up to from a community standpoint for where I work, so for those that don't know, I am the product manager for community at PMI, Project Management Institute. And so we're going through a community migration right now. We are moving all of our users from a homegrown solution to a different platform and all of the content that comes with that. So there's so much complexity that goes along with that, that we're just, we're, we're trying to figure it out. It's not like we haven't worldwide lots of like local groups yeah it's 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 a bear <laughs> it's a bear to say the least but it's also exciting because our community members are ready for it they're excited every time you know i look in the forums they're like what's going on with migration and we're like we'll have some news for you soon <laughs> it's like moving to a new neighborhood You're like, is. is there a starbucks on the corner <laughs> exactly um, so from that end, that's kept me super busy, but then I'm also working, I have um, a blog and an online community for association and nonprofit community builders. And so I'm looking to expand, you know, what that looks like and what those folks need uh, in order to, to get some value out of it. So I'm holding you hearing from that audience, like what's on their mind. So it's, um, I'm doing some, it's interesting because I've started doing some user research interviews this week. And, um, some of the big things that are coming up is that, um, people people like the information about oh great metrics and this is how you you know create a you know blah 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 but they're looking really for the meteor stuff like deeper what does a good strategy look like and how do you connect it to the organization and you know they want to hear it from people who are doing it like their peers they don't want to hear it from you know people vendors they don't want to hear it from consultants they want to hear it from people who are on the ground doing the exact same work and they want to hear case studies and show where it's been proven out to work um and so that i think we're getting to a point from a profession standpoint that we're we're done with all the surface stuff there's plenty of information about out there about metrics get deep with me and help me figure out the the nuances and the stuff that I'm really wrestling with so that I can take my so that I can take my program to the next level. The other thing that I'm hearing is I need support from a career development standpoint on how I how, what's next like right now community manager is the thing that I do in my organization there's no career path up or sideways. So how can I transfer those skills or what does a career projection for community builder look like? So those were really starting to get into the meat of the things that people want and need. Um, and, and I think it's time. I think it's time that we go a little bit deeper within the profession. Well, and that, that ties straight into how do you scale this yep. uh, for an enterprise uh, versus one use case. 
um, I know in the association world, it's a lot, a lot of it is driven by member services and it's a service support mindset around what the community does. And, and really, um, and we saw this tr uh, transition in the com on the commercial side a few years ago, which is, oh, and it has all of these marketing awareness, uh, loyalty, brand, trust, benefits. Yep. Um, yeah. And so it's not really a cost center. It's an opportunity and potential center. Uh, but then if the community is owned by member services or support or whatever it's called in your organization, marketing and communication starts getting involved and getting a little bent out of shape because it's having a big impact on their world, but they have no say, control, input into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and I, hmm. <laughs> and I, and I think, I think one of the ways to combat that is I've, I've been having a lot of conversations with people around, you know, remembering why the community exists, who it's for, and then how you're going to help fulfill the purpose of that community. Um, and that's really kind of the seat of whatever else comes as a part of that value delivery and and what you can get out of community and what the what the members are going to get out of it. So I think that having that conversation and getting that clarity kind of helps reset. Um, even if you've had this community for a long, because I think that it's possible for our communities to exist and be mature for years and for us to get away from that initial why, who and how. Um, and then we wonder why people don't get it or why it's stagnant or you know why it just feels like you're not progressing. Then you have to go back to that baseline and figure out where do we need to refocus and where do we need to trim the fat in our current programs? You know, are we doing things that don't drive value but we think they are because the numbers are high? Um, so I, I really think that that's, that's a key piece of really figuring out where, where that can happen. Well, and I, I look at um, I look at everything as an opportunity, something like that. <laughs> the pet shit thing, which is everyone who complains is asking for an invitation, right? Yep. Like, if you feel strongly about this, then by all means, come help. Yep. Um, so as long as you have that invitation, collaborative mindset around it, um, you can address a lot of that and put the onus back on them to say, is this really a problem? Or are you just not happy and want to like deflect responsibility? <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> that happens yeah. too. <laughs> that happens too. And so I really like putting it back on the onus back on them to say, okay great um how much how much can you commit to right exactly uh, yeah um and i think it's actually maybe even the secret sauce of communities right is if you care there's access to get involved there's there's avenues for you to do that and you sh you 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 develop your own leadership by taking action yep like exactly that, it matters enough to you um and that's really clarifying it's very clarifying very very clarifying <laughs> people people then either will do one of two things they will either go you know you're absolutely right and then they will jump in feet first and and work through it or they'll be like yeah no never mind it's not that big of a deal as i thought it was <laughs> and actually it's it's something that i keep in mind because um I'm an ex-product manager, um, but we get this with executives as well, which is when you ask them to participate in the community, they're like, the last thing I need is more information and people coming at me. Which is true, but what they're not seeing is the clarity that comes from people raising their hands. And you can very clearly see what is worth paying attention to because people are committing their own time and resources to yep. it. And so that's an area you're gonna get left uh, if you do something for that group. 
versus a group where you're asking them to participate and they're complaining, but they're not actually doing anything. Yeah. Um, and so from a product perspective, who are you going to build products for? The people who want it so badly that they will contribute to the solution or the people who are just kind of like, oh, it would be really nice if like, this. right. Oh, there's a lot of things in life. <laughs> <laughs> right it would be nice if a lot of things happen but what, here we are what matters enough for you to get skin in the game so um that's partly why i love communities yeah and i think that also there's there's merit in allowing um allowing people to to air some of the things that are major pain points within the community like i'm a huge advocate of if someone comes into the community and they're like i don't like this and here's why and here's how you can make it better leave it like i don't care if you feel uncomfortable looking at it as a ceo or as a you know portfolio leader or whatever leave that there there's value in that because not only did they take the time to say this is a pain point for me here's why it's a pain point for me and here's how I think you can fix it so that it's no longer a pain point. That is a huge way for product teams to say, you know what, we might be missing something here. Dig, let's dig a little deeper. So that's where you're going to find that kind of gold. And, and I also tell people, listen, if you're going to, if you're going to have a presence there, you need to make sure that you are, that you're active and that you're, that you're communicating with these folks. This is not an audience for you. This is a community. It's collaborative. They're going to talk to you. You're going to need to talk back. If that's not your thing. Please don't. Well, please don't waste your time. The other strategic side of that, which people miss all the time because of the way we've always done business, is uh, there's actually data from the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence to show that uh, communities or groups where there's negative and positive sentiment are more trustworthy. Meaning mm -hmm. if you never get that, that negative or challenging feedback, people are going to dismiss the whole space. And I was just reading um, the Edelman trust barometer again. And I'm like, we all have some issues with trust. <laughs> um, and it's because we we've really dealt with people very transactionally and we're like we're going to perfect this solution back in this back room and then we're going to throw it over the fence and you're going to love it yep and people are like i don't love it <laughs> and then we're like what do you mean we, yeah. we did this for you it's and perfect like, well it's a diamond ring and they're like well i never asked for a diamond ring so like it's a fine diamond ring but it's not <laughs> diamond, right and um and you don't know that unless you bring them along with you and so all the challenges we're having around change management and trust and um, loyalty and engagement, all of those come down to letting people challenge you yep. without getting defensive. Yeah, we tend to take it personal and it's not personal. It's people telling you, this is the real need. You've missed the mark. And that's okay, because then that helps you develop a better product experience, service, what have you, for the people that you say are important to you, the people that you are, are, are looking to serve. So we, we absolutely have to lean into that. And I don't even think it, I, I don't even take it as criticism, because we all have choices to make. And my journey up to this point was these choices, and this is why I made them. And when I get new information, maybe I'll make a different choice. Um, and so this idea that everything comes with a pro and con and nothing is perfect is really something we've got to get into our cultures a little more instead of that personal, like, you're offending me. You're not offending me. You don't care enough about me to offend Right. Me. Like, you don't even know me. Not, How can you be offending me? <laughs> that is not what you care most about. You care about you and, like, what you need to be successful. So, like... Um, there's a lot of psychology relationship stuff going on there that's um, uh, toxic, maybe? I don't know what the word is. But um, So let's switch gears and talk about uh, the pants on fire. Uh, organizations are now coming to community teams, which they never really funded much to begin with, and are like, let's do this, <laughs> like, let's blow this thing up. 
what do we need to be thinking about in terms, like, if you're managing staff, what do you think about? Like, you, this was the conversation you and Lisa had, but like, how do you help them with that, like, rationalization of what we're actually going to need to invest in to do that? Yeah, the first thing I always ask is, what's the long-term strategy around it? Like, this is not going to be, a, like, if you're going to put so much energy and effort into it, long-term, what are you expecting to see? Um, and, and how is this going to affect any other programs that might be affiliated with, you know, these efforts? So um, I, I try to make that very clear. Like, this is not something that you can stand up because now we're in a crisis <laughs> and we need to figure something out real fast. At the end of the day, once you've started engaging people in this way, and you are, if you're really building something meaningful, the expectation is that it will continue. You can't dismantle it and be like, oh, we only needed that for COVID. Um, so then what's the long-term strategy? What does that look like long-term? And once there's clarity around that, then it's easy to say, this is what you're going to need from a resources standpoint. This is how much budget we're going to need. This is how much you're going to have to invest in order to make sure this is successful, not only now, but in the long run. And here's the value that it delivers in the long run, not just in this moment in time, but this, these are the different ways that you can engage people at events. These are the different ways that you can engage people as part of their chapter experience. These are the different ways that pe people can be engaged around a product, a new product release, bunch of different things, but this, is, this needs to be a long-term strategy versus we need to hurry up and get something in place because of COVID. Um, because scrambling just to make something happen right now, people are going to see right through that. And if you don't have any commitment to ensuring that these people have good experiences in these spaces going forward, don't spend the time to do it. Yeah, I'm not even seeing the commitment issue. The issue that I'm seeing, I think people are willing to commit now. The issue I see is they don't even understand uh what is required meaning it they're like well we want to we want to see this engagement so we need the technology we need the whatever like the 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 resource component is completely white space for them like it, it doesn't it hasn't even gotten through <laughs> uh uh and so they're like we're just going to deploy these engagement platforms. And so how do you have that conversation with those types of people who don't even see the need, like forget about the long term, short term, like whatever, they don't even know. Yeah, um, I kind of had a bit of a conversation about that this week um, with uh, some folks internally. And, you know, I think there's this whole mindset that if you just stand it up, people are going to come and do the thing. Like it's Facebook. You just stand it up and then tell people it's there and then they'll go and do the thing. That doesn't work so well for Facebook. <laughs> no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. So I, I always challenge with, okay, um, and, I, and I ask them very specific and pointed questions. What are you going to do if someone misbehaves in the community? How do people know what they're supposed to do once they get there? What if someone has a question? What if you all of a sudden get a spam attack? How are you going to handle that? Like, this is not stuff that, this is stuff that you have to think about. Who's going who's gonna to set the strategy for this, for this engagement? And, and organizations have a tendency to lead with the technology because they think it, that's the magic bean, right? Like, if we just had the right technology, then engagement wouldn't be a problem with this. First of all, I think you've spoken to this before. I don't think people really understand what engagement means when they when they say we have an engagement problem. Do you have an engagement problem or is it something deeper? Um, and what does that mean? So they think that this having this great robust technology that has forums and it's got gamification, it's got all this stuff that people are going to be engaged. But how do they know it's there? How do they know what they're supposed to do when they get there? How do they know it's for them? Um, and so there's there's all these back end questions that I ask to get people to think a little bit differently. Like you you need resources and you need to dedicate time and money and in investing in someone who can help create that 
create that feeling and sense of belonging for the te- that where for where people are gathering as part of that technology but it's much bigger than the technology there's a whole skill and strategy around ensuring that people feel like this is this is the place for them they know that that's where they're supposed to go and they understand what's expected of them once they get there um so that's that's really where i try to get people to focus and then the technology needs to support that not be the leading factor yeah. It's interesting, and I think I said this last week when I was talking to Scott Monty, but there's a church near me, and of course, churches aren't having services, and it's an old New England, white, picket fence type church, Um, and they had a sign up in front, and they said, the church has never been about the building, Um, and I I feel like we should have a t-shirt or something like that. As a <laughs> manager, be like, it's not about the space. Yep. It's what it's like. Would you go to a wedding and just will it spontaneously combust? Will two people <laughs> to get married and like say that? Like, there's a lot of planning that goes into set setting that whole dynamic up behind the scenes. It doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining now getting a crowd together and be like, who's going to get married? <laughs> exactly. Who are we here, here for? <laughs> like, why are we here? Um, but it's, it's essentially, I love that approach to just getting really specific about like the, the types of things that happen in a community that community managers are really responding to orchestrating, uh, protecting against, some of the time I even say, you know, community management is just risk mitigation, right? Like it's, it's making sure these spaces are safe. Um, exactly. The thing you want to have happen there. Exactly. And I think that it gets them thinking about the fact that, you know what, we really need a community manager to, to, to lead this versus marketing coordinator. I know you've got a lot going on, but can you do this for like an yeah. hour a day? Yes. Like, no, it's a full-time job. It's a full, and sometimes it takes more than one person. And it's Many a times it does. different mental model, right? So if you ask, and this is a problem, I was just talking to a community manager who uh, is on the consumer side and has a customer community um, and they had forums. And he, he was hired to actually get customer service people off the forums and create a real peer to peer model. Um, because customer service agents, if you put them in a community and say just you know handle this alongside all these other stuff they're going to treat it like a ticket system yep and i guess that's okay it's a little more transparent than a hidden ticket system but it's not a community nope (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so if that's the engagement you want fine but that doesn't scale the same way. It doesn't create all the other benefits. Um, so it's, it's very similar to that. If you just ask anyone whose job is not community to just come in and they're gonna do whatever they do in that other job in the community and it's not, it's not going to have the impact. And it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's just that's not. They're using yeah. the skills they have. That's not their mental model or what they're being tasked to do. Exactly. Um, so uh, we're kind of at the top of the half hour. And one way I wrap up, and I'm going to spring this on you a little bit, but um, uh, I kind of like wrapping up with like one last thing, something that's caught your attention this week. Um, or that is on your mind because somebody's challenged you or given you information or whatever. Uh, what, what are you thinking about this week? I'm really thinking about, and it's not just been this week, it's been for the past few weeks, about how we can, I think we've come a long way in the profession, but I think that there are some things that we are missing and there are some gaps as a profession that we need to fill. Mm-hmm. And I've been thinking about how we go about filling them. Um, one of the things that I've been really kind of thinking about is the standardization of um, things like roles 
uh, the standardization of how we talk about community management, um, what that actually means and what it entails. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some, um, I think that there are some, some places that have got it, um, but it's still, and in, in, we're, we're talking about it very differently. I think that the more niche you get within the, because I think every profession has a niche, um, but I think the more niche you get in the profession, the, the more we get away from what the core of what community management really is. And I think we really need to standardize the language around it so that people get it, not only us as professionals, but people who are looking to maybe hire a community manager or have community be a part of, you know, the work that they're doing. Um, it's, it's, it's more than just let me get some people together so that they can talk to one another. You know, there's strategy and science behind, you know, how that happens and how do you know it's valuable and how, how do you know what to measure? And there's, there's a bunch of that. And I think we need some solid standardized frameworks to help us leap off and find um, what's what needs to work for the way that we're building. Um, but I think that there's so much out there right now that it's hard to determine what's the right thing to use and pick. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if we had a core uh, a standard that then those things could trickle down from and then people could say, okay, at the end of the day, this is what I need to achieve. The tool that I use to achieve it is up to me. But here's here's what this is supposed to look like um and i think that would help in some ways with the confusion around how do i communicate value how do i know that my community is delivering what it's supposed to be delivering how do i know that my executive leaders get it um and i think that i think that's something that collectively as a profession we should be looking towards um you know as i stated at the beginning people are people people have enough information about what good metrics look like, they're looking to get a little bit deeper. And I think that's an opportunity for us as a profession. Yeah, that's, a, that's great. Um, sort of related and sort of not, uh, what's really been on my mind is governance and organizational governance um, and turning organizations into communities. Um, and when I developed the community maturity model, I, that what was on my mind was how do we adapt organizational governance to create a more open, like this wasn't about this one discrete community over here. Um, but over the years, it's become that because that's how people have been using communities. But just in the last month or two, I have started having conversations about applying that to organizational governance. And that is really exciting to me because one of the things that I uh, have been struggling with is everybody's talking about the customer experience, the employee experience. And I, I think it was in, in writing part of my book that I was thinking about this and I was like, you know, the problem is uh, the motivators aren't aligned. So if you're maximizing profitability as the organization, you're squeezing your employee and your customer. And so you can spend whatever you want on customer experience or employee experience, but if you aligned the incentives, that would just naturally happen. Um, so there's a lot about uh, creating shared value as a operating mechanism to align people naturally, intrinsically. And we're so focused on the extrinsic rewards. Yep. Even when we th talk about like rewards for community stakeholders or leadership groups, we're like, what swag can we give them? What like, me like, and you're like, but think about the intrinsic things. How can, like with the CR network, my objective is to make you a rock star. Right, because if I help you become a rock star, I'm never going to make you become a rock star. By the way, but if <laughs> I help you become that rock star, that is so much better than any like piece of content or program or like whatever that I could give you. And it it's it's a collection of many many things. Um, 
but that's what's going to connect us. Like, I don't know. I mean, we do spend money on events. Shannon has been rocking connect. <laughs> um, and that's important. It's not unimportant, but it's in service to that higher thing. Yes. which is an intrinsic alignment. Um, and I think met the mental model of how we structure organizations is not there yet, but I think some people are starting to have that aha. Um, and that's exciting to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's exciting to me. Um, and to your point, we need to like make sure we can translate that all the way down so that people are still confusing our social media management with our community management. Yep, because that's still a thing. That is still a thing. Anytime that you see a job posting out there, it's always, we need a social media manager to manage our community. And you're like, what? <laughs> I, I suppose, like, I have this theoretical, like, you could use social media to manage a community, but it's really, really hard. Yes. Shared space. Like, you'd have to like really get around a lot of the way social media is <laughs> do that well. Yep. So you could, but I don't see it happening very often. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Marjorie, it has been great to catch up. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's been a crazy week for all of us. I hope you get whatever helps you zen out into the weekend so that you can compartmentalize this and just, I'm going to well, try. I'm going to go well, buy fall decorations this oh, weekend. <laughs> I need to bake pumpkin bread. That also sounds like a plan. That's a great idea. The smell. It's not, well, the taste is good, but like the smell. The smell is what gets it. <laughs> That's a great way to end off. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. You too. Take care. Bye.